Hello, folks. Welcome to Science Talk. I'm your host, Jim Massa. And this is an article that was uh, just published recently in the Siberian Times on November 20th of this year. Bubbling methane craters and super seeps. Is this the worrying new face of the undersea Arctic? Yes, it is. Video and pictures from the latest research missions show gas release in the Laptev and East Siberian seas. So we're looking at here in this photograph, this is a big methane bubble. You see it's a little lighter in color than the surrounding water, but that's methane bubble. That's a bit of it. Now granted, you know, as gas rises through the water column, it expands because the pressure is reduced. You know, good old Boyle's law for pressure and volume, the uh, inverse relationship. But the point is, that's a lot of gas, and that's just not an isolated incident. So a team of 69 scientists from 10 countries documented bubble clouds rising from the depth around 300 meters along a 150-kilometer undersea slope in the Laptev Sea, confirmed high methane concentrations by hundreds of onboard chemical analyses. So scientists have shared the first results of a trip to the world's largest deposit of subsea permafrost and shallow methane hydrates. <clears throat> Fields of methane discharge continue to grow all along the East Siberian Arctic Ocean shelf with concentration of atmospheric methane above the fields reaching 16 to 32 parts per million. This is 15 times above the planetary average of 1.85 ppms. The preliminary results are from this year's only international scientific expedition to the Eastern Arctic. So I'm gonna show you a little video here. Let's see if I can. I oh, can't go full screen with this. Dang. Oh. You can see the bubble right here. Unfortunately, I can't quite make out what's being said there. But you can see the documenting methane bubble. A second discovery is park marks, hawk marks, and craters sunk deep in shelf sediments both the Laptev and East Siberian seas, actively venting bubbles and strong methane signals. All previously discovered fields of methane discharge showed an increase to various degrees. Now we need to figure out exactly how much they grew, said the head of the expedition, Professor Igor Semelotov, my old friend. And there's a photo of him here. Well, I'll share it with you. One of the new discoveries was a field of sea bottom craters in the shallow part of the Laptev Sea some of them 30 meters in diameter. They look like holes in the permafrost, and as a study showed, they were formed by massive methane discharges. Think of, on the land a portion of it, all those uh, basically where the methane bubble built, 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 and went boom! It kind of like blew a big pimple out of the surface and then sunk in. It, to me, it almost it sounds like almost the same mechanism. And when that thing popped, it blew out all that methane into the atmosphere. Also, two more powerful seeps emitted methane through iceberg furrows were discovered in the East Siberian Sea. And we've seen some photos there. And if you look here, all this lighter blue uh, is more the methane. So let's orientate ourselves here. Okay, this is Archangels, which is a, a town in very uh, north uh, 
Russia. So here's the Barren Sea. Okay, this is uh, Novaya Zemlya, big island there, new, means new earth in Russian. It's the Kara Sea, and we have the Laptev Sea. Here's the East Siberian Sea, the Chukchi Sea. So here's Point Barrel, Alaska, right there. And the shaded areas here showing uh, you know, how they cruised around. Right? So they so they went to a lot of places here. The arrows show the direction that they went with the research vessel to collect the samples and so forth. And you can see in a lot of places they'll follow somewhat of a of a grid pattern. But this, this shows uh, their path. So they started uh, here and uh, right there started to two, three, now the four over the five and so on. So that shows the, the route that they took for their right? plan cruise track, the research areas, that's these uh, shaded regions here, and the bathymetry, okay? The deeper the blue, the, uh, the, uh, the darker the blue, the deeper is the ocean. As you can see, this is light blue, so this is more of a shelf, and then you drop off. Like, for example, in the Bering Sea, which is like right over here, Chukchi Sea, it's, you know, 50, 60, maybe 70 meters uh, deep. It gets a little deeper in East Siberian, as we just noted. But still, it's a shallow compared to the deep uh, Arctic Ocean. Here's some of those uh, pockmarks, craters that we just discussed. That's what the research vessel you can see uh, that's the Russian colors there. So it's led by Russian scientists, led by Igor. And uh, Halo Klein, you've heard me discuss Halo Klein, Atlantic water infiltrate. So that would be over more towards uh, this side of things, over to the Barents side. A little hard to read, but you know, they're doing some atmospheric uh, sampling. So, but this is a, uh, looks like a little profile of the ocean. And you can see you go through a halo climb, sharp change in the salinity. There's a nice picture of sampling equipment. You collect samples, probably technicians and grad students. <laughs> That's a bongo net, so probably maybe collect some plankton samples, maybe. And they'll all gathered around the computer to look at the latest downloads. So the expedition mapped over 1,000 large seep fields, which is defined as areas of massive methane discharge over 100 meters or 328 feet, if you convert it and mega seep fields each over a thousand meters in linear dimension. We believe these emissions at this stage have not yet any large impact on global atmospheric methane and climate, yet these huge carbon greenhouse gas capacitors are clearly activated. Six mega seeps were registered in both the Laptev and East Siberian seas, what the scientists described as the first comprehensive observation of active release from methane hydrates on the Siberian Arctic Slope system. So you can see the research vessel here. You can see this is uh, some sea ice here. This looks like, not quite, it looks like uh, what might be called a uh, frazzle ice. I don't, I don't think it's greasy ice. I, you know, not knowing the, quite the dimensions, the exact dimensions of the vessel. Uh, it's definitely not bergy bits. So I'm going to probably call this frazzle ice. When sea ice first forms, you have what's called grease ice, which it kind of looks greasy as it's, in the, as it's starting the brine rejection. Then you get into the frazzle, which is what I think this is, which is like little little conglomerations like you see here. Then they eventually keep, uh, as it cools down, it then coalesces into sheets and so on. There's a nice methane uh, bubble getting ready to break the surface and there's my friend that's that this is professor igor Semelikov. he's a cool guy he and his wife natalia uh natalia shakova 
have done a lot of work on permafrost, methane, and so forth. Natalia has, you know, access price is not mentioned in this article. I wonder if she was not in on this cruise, but uh, she has done a lot of work on the East Siberian shelf looking at the methane issue there. Um, yeah. But the, uh, between Igor and Natalia, they've been uh, doing the, they're, they're like the, uh, the pioneers, the experts on this uh, problem. And uh, collecting some sample, oh, calm sea, look at that, that's a rarity. And you can see, uh, got some methane here, you can see a little, maybe that's ice, maybe some foamy stuff. Expedition members spent 40 days on board the academic uh, Keldish research vessel covering a distance of nearly 6,000 nautical miles. For the first time, scientists managed to take samples of bottom sediment in a methane seep near the Delta River Lena, which is a major river in Siberia. Along with the Lena, the East Siberian Arctic Shelf is fed by other large Arctic rivers like the Katanga, the Indigirka, and the Kolyma which delivers significant quantities of organic matter, thus making it particularly vulnerable to climate warming and erosion. So now, so what was the point of this? Uh, why am I sharing this with you? We're seeing large methane being released. Now, part of the, uh, you know, what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna be trying to quantify how much methane has been released, try to model that over the extent of the area, try to get an estimate of how much methane is in the in the hydrates and the clathrates and so on, and what the rate of release will be, and then use that to model the uh, impact onto the, the climate system and what the contribution to the warming will be. Recently, I was, um, I made an appearance uh, with Jennifer Hines on the, uh, environmental coffee house uh, hosted by Sandy Shellis, and we were discussing how uh, a certain scientist was saying, oh, uh, the, you know, he was basically criticizing those folks who say we've gone past any tipping point scenarios with doomers and all this other stuff here. And he was kind of dismissive of the methane uh, parameter. Jennifer and I both called him out for that. And... Um, Anyway, you, you can watch that video over on Environmental Coffee House uh, page. But um, methane is the big issue. It's a major, major issue. And a lot of scientists are neglecting it or they're discounting it. They're not putting a lot of weight on it. The IPCC certainly uh, does not. And that is a major uh, oversight. It's a major error in the analysis. And Igor and Natalia have been trying to correct that wrong. And um, so they commend it to, for their work. So, you know, this is still being, the, the data is still being analyzed. It's going to be quite some time before the, the uh, results are published. But it's a start or it's a more, it's a continuation of the work that Igor and Natalia have been doing for the past 20, 25 years. It's certainly a very, you know, the size of this expedition, the scope of it was certainly bigger than anything has been done before. So this will gather a lot of information to help fill in a lot of gaps. So this is important work and I look forward to seeing what the results are going to be when they're published. And, um, but this is showing that methane is leaking out of the ground leaking out of the waterways. Hell, go to Smith Lake on the campus of UAF. You can you can see the meth you can see the methane seep there. There's actually a video of someone lighting that up and you know, nice little flame there. This is a little basic uh, lake on, on campus. And there's quite a bit of methane being released. So so now take this and extrapolate around the planet between the permafrost, any waterways, clathrates, hydrates permafrost dying. Methane's a big problem. I remember Igor telling me once, some some years ago, said told me, he said, the methane issues will keep me awake at night. 
as it should all of us. How much is there? What rays are being released? We know while it may not persist as long in the atmosphere of CO2, it's a considerably stronger greenhouse gas, i.e. trapping more heat. And if you keep putting methane into the atmosphere, well, the issue of it not sticking around as long becomes moot because it's always going to be there, always going to be trapping heat and helping to increase the temperature ever more so. So um, stay tuned. I said, wanted to show you what's happening. And to think about the implications. Thank you for your time. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.